Shut up and sit down. South of Perth is the seaside city of Rockingham. Perth sits on a freshwater lake created by the Swan River, whose constrained river mouth presents the entry of salt water and large ships. Subsequently, the majority of the industrial district of the city lies on the southern coastal regions between Rockingham and Perth. Further off the coast is Garden Island, which shelters the coast considerably and turns the coastal zone into an open shallow bay. Garden Island hosts a Navy base HDMA Sterling, which typifies why the rest of the world thinks Australians are upside down people. First of all, two of the largest Royal Australian Navy bases are both built on an island called Garden. Fleet Base East is a wharf that is built on a peninsula that was once created by joining the then Garden Island to the mainland, and hence is no longer an island. While Fleet Base West is called HTMAS Sterling, where the HTMAS stands for His Majesty's Australian Ship, although it's a naval base hosting about a dozen ships and none of them are called Sterling. Fleet Base West is connected to the mainland at Point Piron, via a bridge that's just west of Rockingham Beach. This makes the city of Rockingham a naval town, where there are many young families and lots of people wearing navy uniforms. It's a typical blue-collared town where the houses are built on small plots of land that are all crammed together. It's personally disappointing to see that the underfunding of many public facilities in the local area. I couldn't find a public heater pool anywhere near here, and most of the schools are publicly owned, and nowhere near the university grade at Christ Church Grammar School that's just up the road in Perth. We may underfund our military personnel, but we should be helping them out by better funding public facilities such as state schools, public hospitals and other public amenities such as indoor pools. Off the coast of Shoalwater Bay Island Natural Reserve, that includes Penguin Island. In Sydney, on a sunny winter's day, you can still find people down the beach sunbaking, but here in the middle of spring, there is no shelter from the icy cold wind. The low swell makes it a great place for windsurfing and kite bowling, but little else. Bon Scott, the former lead singer of ACDC, grew up in the industrial town of Fremantle. His family immigrated here after moving from Scotland when he was just a child. On the mouth of the Swan River, they tried to create a for the bohemian sections of the community, with a number of artistic and music stores. While the whole area is still very dominated by the port facilities, it's very similar to Brightonly Sand in Botany. Just below South Fremantle is Coogee Beach, whereas we're in its Sydney namesake as Wedding Cake Island that nulls the surf compared to its neighbouring beaches, in Perth, Coogee Beach has Garden Island blocking any and all swell, making it flatter than Rose Bay. The trip from Perth to Rockingham was only about an hour long, with most of the main roads around here making their way to Perth like spokes in a wheel. There was nothing much in particular to make a detour to check out, and it would have been a very long ride around the rim. This meant a long lunch waiting for the 2pm check-in time. Maybe I missed an opportunity to check out a state forest to the west of the city, although many of the images I had a look at just showed little more than scrub and too much loose sand for a loaded motorcycle. The accommodation has been exceptional. It's literally a fully equipped one bedroom apartment with its own laundry and kitchen. It's been stocked with detergent, Vegemite, peanut butter, honey, cloud wrap and alfoil. With my previous experience, I'm normally just totally ecstatic when I have salt and pepper. Although Perth is at very similar latitudes to Sydney, it's noticeably colder here with no hills to offer a break from the very cold southerly breeze. I'm very happy to have VersaCycle air conditioning. I'm only a short walk from the beach, but it's been far too cold to jump in without a wetsuit. Maybe I should have stayed a little longer in Perth waiting for the weather to improve. It would have been happy to here to spend more than the two weeks and that would have given me more time to complete my taxes as planned. The bike is performing well. I wish I'd adjusted the chain sooner. I still need to book it in for a service while in Adelaide, and I'm still confident that'll be all good to get me back to Sydney. I've dropped my phone one too many times, and now it's no longer responding to any touches above the damaged section of the screen. Initially, I was going to hold on to the old phone as backup and trade in my old backup for a new phone, but now I'm relying on the old backup I'll be left with no phone once I trade the backup in. I've still got another week before I get the new phone, so my presence on Instagram has been greatly diminished. You don't realise how dependent you are on these devices until you try living a week without one. I'm having great difficulty trying to get things sent to me while being on the road. Even though I've spent the previous four weeks here in Perth, I'm still waiting for things to arrive. 
I purchased stuff from Amazon, removing items not stocked by Amazon, and still after a week, the package has not been sent. I'm starting to think that I should have had things sent to my uncle's place, so he could have redirected them to me once they had arrived, and that should have reduced the timing issues, but that would have hassled my uncle on a regular basis. So far in the last few weeks, I've broken both my camera and the phone. It's also the bike cover is starting to get all torn from the high winds, and the charging point on the bike is starting to rust. Additionally, the new phone no longer has a 3.5mm microphone port. Many things are breaking down, wearing out, or just incompatible. Trying to replace things on the road is becoming difficult, as things like the camera and charging point are too unique, and a USB-C microphone is far too new to be purchased from a local store anywhere in Perth and hence they all need ordering in. The shipping time is so inconsistent it's difficult to get packages to arrive at the same time I plan to be somewhere. Spending a year on the road travelling around Australia is having its challenges. In Perth there's about 100 kilometres of very beautiful homes along the edge of the Swan River that house the rich. There's about a 30 kilometre stretch of beautiful homes along the northern coastline where the middle class enjoy a comfortable lifestyle and there's about a 50 kilometre stretch to the south of the city that house the industrial blue collar workers. But here in Perth, even a welder can enjoy a beautiful home with absolute beach frontage. Perth is a city that reminds me of what Sydney was like some 50 years ago, when it was a hip and happening place that had room for all. A time before the high cost of housing put such stress on the local population and turned Sydney into a dog eat dog city. It's remarkable what happens to a city where everyone who wants something can achieve it. There's no animosity towards their neighbours, under the misguided belief that they're getting ahead and they are not. I wanted to stay longer in Perth. It's becoming sad to think that each stop now is one step closer to home and an end to the big lap. In one way, I want to take a longer break and get some real work done, but on the other side I'd like to continue seeing the rest of the world. Next stop is at Margaret River, where I'll return to my one week usual stay. I was expecting the weather to warm up while I was here in Perth, but I still think it's too early. So thanks for following my adventures around Australia. Remember to go out there and do something to enjoy your day.